Joe McMonagall is famed through the paranormal world for his technical accuracy in remote viewing. Working for US intelligence, his achievements are legendary, but the story I'm about to share is less well known, and starts in 1986. At that time, Joe had retired from the US Army Intelligence Services and was living in the Blue Mountains of West Virginia. However, he was still involved in remote viewing research, and when a research program arose out of Stanford University, agreed to take part in it. This project was led by Dr. Stephen LeBerge, a researcher famous for his sleep experiments, and the idea was this, to test whether or not remote viewing could be accomplished while in the lucid dream state. The lucid dream state occurs when the dreamer in the midst of a dream becomes aware they are dreaming and with that awareness is able to exert control over the dream environment. And this is something Joe McMonagall had a real skill for. He credits this in part to early work that he had done with the Monroe Institute where going into a lucid dream state is a prelude to moving into the out of body state. However, there was also another reason. A near death experience he had had when based in Eastern Europe some years earlier. At the time this happened, he had found himself out of his body as it lay there, witnessing the drama as medics fought to save his life, which thankfully they did. After that event, he'd often find his mind's perception slipping free of the confines of his physical body, and this may also have given him an enhanced sense of awareness when exploring dream realities while he slept. McMonagall flew out to California, reporting in at the Stanford Sleep Lab, and then the research began. And it doesn't sound like the most comfortable setup. First of all, a large number of EEG sensors were glued to Joe's scalp to gather as much brain data as possible. He was shut inside a well-shielded and soundproofed room. Just a little bit larger than a single bed. The temperature and environment of the room was tightly controlled and there was an electrical socket into which Joe's superglued electrodes traveled into the wall. All he had to do now was go to sleep. But of course, once asleep, that's when the real work began. In the room next door, scientists monitored Joe's brainwave data, which told them where he was in the various cycles of sleeping and dreaming. First, Joe needed to fall asleep. Then, he had to have a dream. Once dreaming, he'd have to remember that he had another job to do and become aware and awaken that reality. Then, he'd have to signal the scientists. A target would then be randomly chosen and projected in a sealed room for him to view, at which point he would then have to access the target, study it, remember what it looked like, and then signal the scientists to awaken him. He would then report a description of the image he saw for analysis. A piece of cake, right? Well, no one, including Joe himself, actually believed he would be able to do all this stuff, but they had to try. Settling into a relaxed state, Joe allowed himself to fall asleep. At some point, he became aware he was dreaming. Remembering this, he shifted his eyes left, right, left, right. Now, apparently, when we move our eyes in a dream, our eye muscles respond in kind. And it was this non-random left to right movement of Joe's eyes that alerted the scientists monitoring him that he was aware and active in the dream environment. From his book, The Stargate Chronicles, McMonagall shares, I found the greater the depth of the feeling of reality I had in my lucid dream state, the better I did on the target. But there was an interesting sidebar, which was beginning to spook me after a few days in the sleep lab. I was beginning to have numerous back-to-back -back false awakenings, thinking I had awakened when I hadn't. It's stepping from one lucid dream state into another lucid dream state, believing that you have actually come out of your sleep. After signalling them that I was ready to be awakened at the end of an LDS adventure, Stephen came into the booth and shook my shoulder, waking me up. I spent a few moments becoming grounded and being awake, then turned on the tape recorder, recording my impressions of the target. I spent a bit of time drawing my impressions on the pad of paper, after which I announced that I needed to go to the bathroom. Unplugging my wire umbilical from the booth wall, I walked out into the empty corridor and padded down to the men's room in my bare feet. Since we were running the experiments at night, there were no students in the basement lab area, so the light had been turned off in the men's room. I hit the switch, and nothing happened. Backing out of the men's room, I looked around for another switch on the exterior and, not finding one, just stood there for a moment. A janitor came round the corner, and I stopped him. The lights don't work in the bathroom, I said. He grunted and opened the door and hit the switch and the lights came on. I thanked him, and he grunted again, then continued on his way. After finishing in the bathroom, on the way out, I hit the switch to turn off the lights. They didn't go out. I hit the switch again, and still they didn't go out. So, I carefully inspected the switch as I attempted to throw it a third time. My finger was passing through it, as though it were not there. I just stood there for a few minutes confused. It was unbelievable. My finger was actually passing through the wall switch itself. I kept thinking, man, 
Wait till Stephen and Ed get a load of this. Then I realised I must still be asleep. It shook me to the core. I was living a near-perfect reality in every sense of the word that I had expected to live. If it was true, then there was one sure way of testing it. I stood totally still in the doorway to the bathroom and quickly looked over my left and right shoulders four times. Stephen shook me awake in the sleeping chamber. It was true. I had done my entire debriefing in a lucid dream state. I repeated the process and detached my umbilical and padded down to the room where they were doing the monitoring. I wanted to tell them about my experience. When I entered the room, Stephen was working at the computer alone. Where's Ed? I asked. Stephen looked at me with puzzlement. Ed who? I felt the blood run to my knees. Could I still be in a lucid dream state? Quickly, I looked rapidly over my left and right shoulders again, and almost immediately Stephen shook me awake again. I didn't move. For the longest time, I just lay on the bed, staring back at Stephen. Finally, I said, Am I awake? I don't know, are you? He humorously asked back. How do I know when I'm awake? I asked back without humour. I don't think it's possible to ever know when you're really awake, Stephen quickly returned. Maybe life itself is one long lucid dream state. I continued to lay there not moving. After what seemed like an eternity, I sat up and looked around, feeling the walls of the booth and touching the cold floor with my bare feet. It felt real enough. Looking up, I saw Stephen pulling up a chair at the small desk in the sleep room. He was preparing a set of connector cables while he hummed a happy tune to himself. I watched fascinated as he leaned over and began gluing them to the head of a bear sitting in the chair next to the desk. There, there, little fellow. This won't hurt at all. <sighs> I lay back down on the bed and closed my eyes. Was this ever going to end? I lay there a long time, trying to think of a way out of the experience, but kept coming back to not being able to tell when I was really awake. Eventually, on the fifth try, I was able to describe the target, draw it, disconnect from the booth wall, and walk outside, where a couple of early morning students looked at me strangely. Nothing changed from that point on, so I've either lived a very long lucid dream state, or I reverted back to reality, if there is one. The results of this research were stunning, and while nothing much was ever done with it publicly, one can't help but wonder if avenues of this nature were explored more thoroughly in secret. Probably we'll never know. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, as this helps me enormously. And thanks for watching.